Hi there, I'm Dr. Albert Chung, and welcome to Your Friendly Proctologist. This is a safe space for all of us. And let me introduce myself to you if, you have, if you're new here. I'm a fellow anal butt, bottom end sufferer just like you. And I have hemorrhoid issues, anal fissure issues, and anal spasm issues. This is a safe place. I want it to be helpful for you. I want you to be able to gather as much information as you can here to help yourself out, but also to help you with your interactions with your doctors. With you armed with more knowledge and information, you're going to get a lot more out of that time with your doctor. And today I want to continue that theme because I want you to be as selfish as you possibly can about your own care. You know, if you're shopping for a car, we got so many websites, so many broadcasts, podcasts about people trying to get you on the offensive, right? We're not trying to be on the defensive, let the salesman take advantage of us. Everybody's talking about what's invoice pricing. Make sure you get all the options. Make sure you get a good deal on the car before you talk about your trade-in, right? All these little tips and hints. Why isn't it the same anywhere else? I think it is. Yes, we're talking about your own body, but I think, yes, it is even more important so because it is our bodies, our health. We only get one of each of these, right? We should be arming ourselves. We should be prepared going into there. Is it that much different than getting your clothes dry cleaned? Really? I mean, you're paying for a service and you expect to know what you're getting into, what are the benefits, what is the recovery, how, what do I expect to get, what am I getting, how is it gonna be done? All those questions, in my opinion, no questions asked should be presented to you in an organized fashion until you are satisfied. Yeah, I really said it. Healthcare has gotten to a point where it is so bad and yet it is so accepted nowadays. It's ridiculous. No more, in my opinion. No more of that. Enough's enough. I can go on this, this, this soapbox thing all year long. But the point again, be as selfish as you possibly can about your own health. Be your own advocate. So the first thing in this theme is what is a real second opinion? And I totally advise everybody to get a second opinion, always. I don't care how much you like this certain doctor that you just saw, get another opinion. You can gain a lot more knowledge that way. You can compare and contrast. Ask, ask the same question to both doctors. See what they say. What is really behind the thought process about the recommendations they are giving you, whether they are giving you creams, surgery, whatever. And I tell my patients, don't tell the new doctor that you just saw somebody else. The reason being is you want to tell them the exact same story in the exact, almost exact same way that you told the first doctor. That way the second doctor is not clouded by other people's judgments. They don't get an extra heads up on what their recommendation was which will cloud their judgment. You know, there's a bias here. Because you're here for a second opinion, they almost want to be different sometimes. You just can't help it, it's human nature. And it's not to say that either the doctors are going to be bad, but you want to be getting a clear um, sense of their judgment and what they want to do for you, what their impression of your condition is. It's super important. The other thing about second opinions, be careful about what is considered to be a second opinion. What I mean by that is that there are many medical groups or big hospital conglomerates, corporations that own many doctors. They are employed by them. For example, the classic one is Kaiser Hospital. Kaiser has many colorectal surgeons just like me. But when you see one doctor and you say you want to see a second opinion, what are you going to get? You're going to get another surgeon in the same Kaiser Hospital system. Is it truly going to be a second opinion? Second opinion meaning an independent thinker, someone who can see your problem with a blank slate. The obvious problem is that 
people here, people in those hospital systems can read your notes. They know you saw another doctor. You're there for a second opinion. Is there going to be a bias there? I don't know. Some doctors will maybe give you a true second opinion, but how can you be sure is the question. You go to a university hospital, great places to get care, but when you get two opinions from the same group of doctors that work together every day, are you really getting an unbiased, unrelated, blank slate second opinion? I don't know. I highly suggest you try and find two doctors that have nothing to do with each other. They don't work in the same hospital. They may be on two separate parts of town. I think that's the way to get a real second opinion. Someone who's not involved with insurance. Someone like myself, for example. I'm sorry, it's not supposed to be an on-purpose plug, but you get what I'm saying. I am not associated, affiliated with anybody. I could care less what somebody else said. I don't care. In fact, when, I, when patients say they come to see me, I say I don't care what that other surgeon says. I'm going to hear your story, look at you, and make my own plan of care for you because of what you told me, not what anybody else said. And that's the kind of second opinion I know people want. I know they don't want me to just spit out the same things. They want to hear and understand their problem from another, another person's brain, okay? You know, I'm not just trying to pick on Kaiser, but really there are large medical groups that have multiple surgeons and they work together. Are you truly getting a second opinion, that completely independent thought? Think about that. The other thing here is this. I tell people this with the example of physical therapists all the time. Physical therapists, similar to doctors, have multiple different ways and thoughts like, for example, a certain thing with exercises, for example, okay? One therapist may do more massage therapy and maybe not focus on all the exercises. Another therapist may have a totally different set of exercises. And another therapist may have a different opinion about how to treat your problem. So when you see one therapist, definitely do have a very low um, threshold for switching to another therapist if they're not working for you. Don't sit there with the same therapist for six months trying your best to try and see if something will happen when in the last four months with that person, nothing's changed. Don't just keep seeing that same person. Get out of there, get another opinion, and I highly recommend that. Don't get too attached to these people. Honestly, they don't care if you decide to switch, and neither should you. This is nothing personal. It's just that I am here to defend myself for care. I am, used, I am asking of your expertise to help me with my medical condition, and I don't care if I like you. This is not about that. Nothing personal. Unfortunately, this is business, and this is my livelihood and quality of life. You can tell the emotion and the passion behind my voice. And it's because I hear so many stories like this. I've seen it, experienced it for myself, and I'm frustrated for you guys. I want you to be aware of these issues. I want you to be on top of it. I want you to take the offensive. I want you to be armed, ready to go into that car dealership and make a great deal on a car that you want to make a deal and really be able to make good decisions about your healthcare and feel good about it. Feel confident with the providers, the doctors, the therapists that you've chosen and you want to actively work with. And I think that is what makes a beautiful product of a healthier person in the end, a more thoughtful under person who understands and takes responsibility for their care. And I'm going to get off my soapbox and high horse now because I want all of us to get better. I want you to be more informed. It is not, in the end here, last point, it is not your fault that you did not get better, okay? Many people will blame themselves thinking, oh, I wish I would have known that. I wish I didn't do that thing, pro uh, procedure with that doctor. If only I had known. And that's the point. How can you know? You did not go to school for this for the subject of medicine. You are not a doctor. You pursued your dreams in life and 
But that's why experts like me should be out there telling you and giving you the counseling to get better. That's our job. And I feel it is our responsibility, providers like me, to help you, right? To make that accurate diagnosis, to try things, inform you, give you choices, have those educational deep discussions with you. And I think that is very important. I've rambled enough here. Again, the bottom line here is I'm seeing a lot of people honestly getting a raw deal out of this healthcare um, relationship. And, and it's not your fault. Honestly, it is the obligation of the healthcare provider to provide you with care. If they are unable to meet that, they should tell you that maybe you should get a second opinion. They should tell you that I'm not quite confident I can make you better, you know, and allow you to move on seeing other providers and getting answers instead of being held captive. Um, gosh, if there's any questions or any issues along with this that you feel strongly about, comment there below. And I want you to, again, be strong and to be healthier in the days ahead. Thank you so much for listening. Be on the lookout for yourself. You take care. Bye-bye.